بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله we'll be beginning a تفسير سورة الكهف uh, and every single day we'll just do a portion of سورة الكهف and today I wanted to talk about uh, really what are the main themes of Surah Al-Kahf and what did our Prophet ﷺ say about the blessings of Surah Al-Kahf. Surah Al-Kahf is one of the earliest surahs revealed. And the reason why we are concentrating on Surah Al-Kahf in this month is that Surah Al-Kahf summarizes for us really the gist of Islam. It is one of the earliest revelations. In fact, our Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, that Surah Al-Kahf and Surah Al-Maryam and Surah Al-Taha, these surahs are from Al-Itaq Al-Awwal, the earliest revelations. They are of the primary revelations that have been given to me. And the main theme of Surah Al-Kahf is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you against all trials. Surah Al-Kahf is a surah full of stories. And in every story there is a trial. And the main theme of it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you at times of severity. And if you look at Surah Al-Kahf, there are many stories, but there are four stories that are the crux of the surah. The first of them is the story of the young men. And they go and they seek shelter in the cave. And that's where the surah gets its name, Surah Al-Kahf. And this is the fitna of religion. When people persecute others because they believe in Allah. إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ They were a group of young men. They believed in Allah. But the king wanted to kill them. The king wanted to kill them because they were believers. So they go and they seek protection in a cave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them. The second story is the story of the two card gardens. The story of the men with the two gardens. And this is the story that is the fitna of money. Fitna tul mal. What happens when money gets to your head? What happens when money causes you to be arrogant? And the solution here is, uh, as we'll get to inshallah when we get there, the sol solution is to realize that this dunya is temporary. That Allah gives and you didn't give. That all that you have will eventually be taken away. And so the fitna of money is the second main story. The third story is the story of Musa and Khidr. And the main fitna here is the fitna of false knowledge if that knowledge does not lead to humility. That it is possible that even knowledge can become a fitna. Even knowledge can lead to arrogance if it is misused and abused. But of course, Musa alayhi salam, he overcomes that. And in his humility, in his humbleness, he learns from somebody other than himself and he rises because of it. So the third fitna is the fitna of knowledge. And the final story, the story of Dhul Qarnayn. The story of Dhul Qarnayn. And the story of Dhul Qarnayn is the fitna of power. The fitna of mulk and mulukiyya. The fitna of controlling other people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Allah tested Dhul Qarnayn with that fitna. But how did Dhul Qarnayn overcome it? By constantly being aware that Allah is Malikul Mulk. Allah is, He might be Dhul Qarnayn. Allah is Dhul Jalali wal Ikram. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the ultimate king. And so we learn from this four major fitnas. The fitna of the religion, when you're persecuted for your religion. The fitna of money. The fitna of knowledge. And the fitna of power. And these are the four main stories and we'll come to them bit by bit. What are some of the ahadith that mention the blessings of Surah Al-Kahf? There are many ahadith, we'll summarize only two or three because of time. Once it is narrated in Sahih Bukhari, a companion was reciting Surah Al-Kahf. His name is Al-Bara' ibn Azib, famous companion. And he noticed his horses becoming agitated. So he looked up and he saw a chandelier basically of light coming down. He saw lights that are many different, like what we call a chandelier. And when he recited, the chandelier of lights would come down. And when, he, and when it came down, the horses became agitated. When he stopped reciting, the chandelier went up, or the lights went up. So he went and he informed the Prophet ﷺ what is going on. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Tilka sakina nazalat. This is the sakina. Ibn Hajar says these are the malaika. They're called sakina because wherever the angels go, peace comes. Right? Wherever there are angels, there is salam and sakina. And so tilka sakina. This is the peace that came down because you're reciting Surah Al-Kahf. They came down to listen to the Quran. So Surah Al-Kahf is such a beautiful surah, even the angels wanted to come down to listen to it. We already mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said, Surah Al-Kahf is of the earliest revelations. These are from the earliest revelations that have been given to me. Why? Because Surah Al-Kahf 
fortifies you from Iman, in your Iman. It tells you that no matter whatever is happening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you. So Surah Al-Kahf was revealed in the first or second year of the da'wah. Another blessing of Surah Al-Kahf, Abu Darda narrated that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf will be saved from the fitna of Dajjal. From the trials of Dajjal, whoever memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf will be protected from the fitna of Dajjal. And in another hadith by Nawas ibn Sab'an, which is a very long hadith, Nawas says one day we started talking about the Dajjal, the Sahaba, and we became so scared we felt he might be in the trees outside the masjid. You know, when you talk about stories, you get a little bit scared. When the Prophet saw us, he said, what is the matter? Masha'nukum. So they said, we talked about the Dajjal until we became terrified. So the Prophet ﷺ then, one of the longest hadith about Dajjal is in Sahih Muslim. He told them all of these details and when is he, or when is he, sorry, what is he going to come with and what are his trials and it's a long uh, hadith and in it he said, if Dajjal comes when I am amongst you, then I will be your argumenter or your protector against him. But if he comes when I'm not here, then every Muslim will be his own protector. You won't have any figure that you can go to then. فَكُلُّ مُسْلِمٍ حَجِيجُ نَفْسِهِ Everyone you will have to basically be your own protector when you argue against the Dajjal. So then he said, So whoever amongst you sees him, فَمَنْ أَدْرَكَهُ مِنْكُمْ Then let him recite the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf. <laughs> Let him recite the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf. So we learn therefore that the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf and in the other hadith, the 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf will protect you from the fitna of Dajjal. Another blessing of, of Surah Al-Kahf is that our Prophet said, whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday will have a light emanating from him until the next Friday. Reported in Musadraq of Al-Hakim. Reciting Kahf on Friday will give you a light until the next Friday. And similar to this, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated that whoever recites Surat al-Kahf as it was revealed, as it was revealed, which means recite it properly with tajweed, with khushur. You recite it not just like a cassette tape, you recite it with proper tilawa, which means you do it with khushur. Then he meets the Dajjal, that that person shall be saved from Dajjal overpowering him. That's the first blessing. The second blessing, the same hadith. And whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on one Friday shall have a light, in this version it says, coming from him all the way shining to Mecca. And this hadith shows us therefore that this light is so powerful, it's as if it will illuminate all the way to Mecca. And in yet another version which is slightly weak, uh, and there's no harm in narrating it, it is said that whoever recites Kahf will have all of his minor sins forgiven until the next Friday, from one Friday to the next. So clearly there's something about reciting Kahf on Friday. Now, why is Surah Al-Kahf linked with protection from Dajjal? What's the deal about protecting from the Dajjal? And by the way, the fitna of Dajjal, it is the worst fitna that mankind has ever seen. Our Prophet ﷺ said, that since Allah has created Adam up until the day of judgment, there is no trial that is more harmful to mankind than the Dajjal. There is no fitna that will cause more destruction, wreak more havoc, kill more people, cause more bloodshed than the fitna of the Dajjal. The Dajjal will come, we learn from our traditions, and he will claim to be a god on earth. And he will be given apparently certain miracles that will fool mankind into thinking this man is a god. He shall be able to stop the water, uh, the, the rain from flowing. That whoever rejects him, he will perish or die. He will be able to be killed. Whoever believes in Dajjal, Dajjal will snap his fingers and the water will fall. And the plants will flourish and the people will be able to eat. So whoever rejects the Dajjal will be tested and tried. Whoever accepts the Dajjal's claim that he is God will flourish on earth. So he will be tested and try, sorry, people will be tested and tried through him like no other fitna. So what has Surah Al-Kahf got to do with this? Well, look at the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf. The very first story set up in the first 10 verses is about those young men who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the king was trying to kill them. So what happens? They fled seeking Allah's protection. Allah gave them that protection. In the time of Dajjal, Dajjal will be that king. 
And he will be that person going and killing everybody who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to become like those young men who fled away. And in fact, our Prophet literally said that a time will come when the Dajjal is here. The believers will run to the mountains. They will run to the Jibal, running away from the Dajjal. And this is exactly what these young men did. They fled to the mountains and they sought refuge in caves. And that is exactly what Muslims will do later on in time. Also, one of the trials, one of the biggest trials of Dajjal will be what? That he will be able to control food and water. Allah will give him that power. And so what will you do when you don't have uh, money, uh, water to drink? When you don't have food to eat? If you believe in Dajjal, you will get that food. And if you don't believe in Dajjal, he will cause the water to stop amongst you. He will cause the earth to go dry. What does Surah Al-Kahf say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly says, Inna ja'iluna ma ala al-ardi sa'idan juruza. We are the ones who, what, who make what is upon this earth uh, barren and dry. We're the ones who do that. So if you want to be fed, turn to me, don't turn to the Dajjal. So the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf mentions it is Allah's power to dry up the earth and not the power of Dajjal. And also, we learn here that those who sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paved a way out for them. How perfectly the 10 verses finish. That Allah says in the Quran, that when they sought refuge in the cave, they said, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْلِنَا رَشَّدًا This is exactly where the 10th verse stops. O oh our Lord, bestow your mercy upon us and help us in our affairs. That's exactly where the 10th verse stops. So it's an optimistic verse. Notice here, what is the 11th? verse where we're, which we're not supposed to recite when we meet the Dajjal that's the two we're only supposed to recite 10 verses what is the 11th verse the 11th verse is what Allah saved them by causing them to go to sleep we don't want to be saved by Dajjal through sleep that's not how we're going to be saved the, the Prophet told us we will be saved when Isa bin Maryam comes our saving from Dajjal will not be through sleep so we don't recite the 11th verse we stop right at the 10th and the 10th tells us that they made dua to Allah and Allah answered their dua we're supposed to recite those 10 verses and inshallah this is enough for today every day we'll talk just a little bit just a few ayah and you don't need to take notes because it will be put online and you can listen to it later on however the request that I have and it is a request that we, all of us cooperate with one another the the request that we have, memorize this surah. Memorize this surah. Memorize this surah. And make it a part of our weekly routine to recite Surah Al-Kahf on every single Friday. This is the opportunity where we're going to go over the tafsir of Kahf every single day. Just two, three ayat, ten minutes. And then next day we'll continue. Our goal every day we do one or two ayat. Inshallah, all of us together, let us memorize them so that by the time we finish the month, Inshallah, we would have memorized all of Surah Al-Kahf and also understand it in a manner that when we recite it on Friday, it will bring about khushu and taqwa and we'll have that light shining uh, from us until the next Friday. And inshallah, we will continue tomorrow. Which is Akumullahu khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.